Good morning and welcome back to Dylan Pickup's blog. Today we're going to talk about the fundamentals that all make this whole thing work and that is how sound works in relation to the electric guitar. So I hope you stay tuned. Alright so if we're going to play guitar, if we are going to choose pickups, do our setup, all that kind of stuff, it's uh, helpful to really understand, and this might sound a little elementary, but it sounds, it, it, it really would help to understand how sound works in relation to the electric guitar. Because then, as we make decisions in our setup, uh, materials, pickups, even our effects, if we understand how, what we're doing from the very beginning when our pick strikes the string, um, that understanding might help us. So we're going to talk about the two main kinds of waves. We know that in sound, we know that um, sound travels by means of basically a compression wave. Well, what does that mean? That means that any time, and I drew a couple of examples of it here, uh, this is a tuning fork. When we strike a tuning fork, um, the forks at a particular frequency vibrate back and forth. What is required for sound is the movement of an object at some frequency uh, within the audible range and then a medium for that sound to travel through. Think of air as not a gas but a liquid. Think of it as a liquid for a second because it really is, it does have thickness if you will. So. When you, push, when you push on water and you can see the waves going across, um, air does exactly the same thing. And basically that's, that's really it. it. It acts just like a liquid when you push it. So when we push it, those waves come across to our ears and our ears do the ear thing and we hear it. Okay, so you could tell I'm not like a... I don't know about ears. I just know about sound. Get into it. So, this is another example. This is my crude drawing of a snare drum. When we strike the drum on the top, it creates a compression wave or pushes against the medium that is air, comes through, it probably decays a little bit, hits the other one, and you know, of course, there's a snare on the bottom. But the idea is, is that it pushes against air, pushes against air, pushes against air. At the end result of our amplifier, the same thing. The speaker is vibrating, it pushes against the air, it comes to our ears. This is a compression wave. This is how acoustic instruments principally work. This is how uh, a piano works and this is how an acoustic guitar works. And I will show you why. Okay, here is a very crude, again, drawing of the basic parts of an acoustic guitar. We have the string, we have the bridge, we have the sound box of the guitar, a piano also has the same thing. So in a piano there's a hammer that strikes the strings, for us it's the, our, our, our pick. As much energy from the strings as possible, as accurately as possible, so whatever frequency the string is making, we are as accurately as possible trying to transfer that energy to the soundboard of the guitar to <laughs> make compression waves within the guitar and push back out the hole and so we can hear it. The interesting thing though is if you have a really really good design guitar you're gonna hear and feel those compression waves off all sides of the guitar and feel it. Like that's my favorite thing. A really good acoustic guitar that you can actually, it almost jumps out of your hands when you feel it because the whole thing is moving, creating compression waves from all directions and uh, giving you a nice full sound. You notice that we have not talked about the movement of the strings at all because that is a different kind of wave. We've discussed compression waves that push against this medium that is the air. We'll talk about a completely different kind of wave called the transverse wave. Alright, so we're going to switch to electric guitars and we're going to switch to something called a transverse wave. The goal of making sound with an electric guitar is not the same as an acoustic. An acoustic guitar, you're trying to move the air, like we discussed, to our ears 
as accurately as possibly reproducing this vibration of the string by a compression wave pushing through the air and getting to our ears. The electric guitar is completely different. Because we were trying to amplify it electrically, we want the sound of the string, and here's my electric guitar, here was the nut, the bridge, we got a humbucker in the bridge, and we got a single coil in the neck, tuning key, neck, okay, so it's a guitar. My awesome drawing. So, <clears throat> when we strike this string, the goal is to not move the whole guitar and so that we can hear it across the room. The goal is to, as accurately as possible, reproduce whatever frequency of the string in within the magnetic field of the pickup so that it can go and do what the pickup does. And we discussed that in our other blogs and uh, we're getting obviously into more detail with that with magnets and stuff. But the idea is, and you can check that out, how pickups work in our other blog, but the idea is, is to as accurately as possible, okay, reproduce this frequency of the string moving, not of the whole guitar moving, because we're not trying to push the air across the room. Now, we're going to hear it a little bit when we strum it unplugged, obviously, because a little baby compression wave is going to happen off of that string, and that's why we hear a guitar when we strum it uh, from across the room, even when it's unplugged. But it's not very loud, because it's only the movement, more or less, of the string. Now, there is some movement in the guitar. We'll get, it, we'll get to that in a minute. So what I like to use as an illustration for the transverse wave is the buff muscly guy at the CrossFit gym, the fixed point, and that thing where they whip the rope. I'm not a CrossFitter, so I know nothing about this except for this right here is a transverse wave. Instead of taking the medium of the air and trying to move it, it is there is a frequency present in the object and it is actually transferring energy from him through the object at a particular frequency to the fixed point. Okay, that is what a transverse wave is. It doesn't have anything to do with the air moving, it's the object itself, uh, the, the energy moving through the object. Okay, so we do this the same way with a guitar. The difference is that with a guitar, we don't have a muscly guy on one end, we have a nut on one end, and we have the bridge on the other end, and the string going across it. When we strike that string, actually let's do this, and I'm not going to get into harmonics and fundamentals and nodes and antinodes today because we're going to talk about that a different day. But when we strike the string that basically moves this here and then it to down to the neck or down to the nut and it bounces back and it goes back and forth and back and forth, we will discuss <coughs> uh we will discuss harmonics, nodes, and antinodes, and octaves, and all that stuff at a, at a different time. But the point is, is that we've introduced energy into the string with our guitar pick right here, and now that's bouncing back and forth. The goal of an electric guitar in your setup is to keep as much energy as possible between these two points so that you do not lose this energy that is trying to be this frequency. So let's say it's an A string, it's A440, and you strike that string, you don't want it to be another note. You don't want it to pick up a bunch of uh, interference. So let's make this nut out of Play-Doh, and all of a sudden we strike this string, and that energy goes down there, and it goes thump, and it doesn't come back. All of a sudden our sustain is gone. So the reason it's important to understand sound and how it works in an electric guitar is, when we're setting up our guitar, when we're choosing our nut material, when we're choosing our bridge material, and we'll do blogs on specific bridge materials and nut materials and that sort of stuff too, remember that the goal of the entire thing, our setup, so our angle of our peg head, um, our bridge breakover angle, um, and actually the scale length and all that stuff, I mean it all works in, but specifically thinking about attack and sustain right now, what we're trying to do is keep as much energy in between these two points as possible Otherwise, the pickup isn't going to see accurately the frequency that we're trying to reproduce. That's, that's all it is. And, you know, there's a lot more science that goes into this, so don't get on me for uh, 
for not having more details because we want to talk about those details specifically later. Um, you know, nodes and anti-nodes and all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about that. Oh, that brings me to one little side point. So, just real quick, because this bugs me. This thing you see on the internet where there's a picture of a string from an iPhone camera and it's moving like this, that's not how a string moves. The reason that does that is because iPhones have something called, and a lot of CMOS cameras have something called a rotary shutter. And they only run at like 29 frames a second, 27 frames a second, depending on the, the unit. And it's not fast enough, and all it's doing is catching, this is the motion that it catches because it's actually a spinning shutter. That is not how a string moves. A string moves like what we talked about, where it's basically bouncing back and forth long ways. And if you speed up your shutter speed to 150 or 250 frames per second, you will see that accurately. But at 29 frames per second with a rotary shutter, this is what you inaccurately see. That's not exactly how it moves. So anyway, that's just a thing. It's been running all over the internet and it bugs me. So that's, uh, that's that. So remember, how sound moves in an electric guitar versus an acoustic one. We're not pushing air. We are trying to, <coughs> for the accuracy of our note, maintain energy between these two points. When you're setting up your guitar, when you're choosing materials, the hardness of those materials, these angles at the peghead, these angles at the bridge, and the scale length and all that stuff plays into it. But just keep that in the back of your mind when you're picking all that stuff, trying to keep the energy between these two points to accurately translate that vibration into our magnetic field of our pickup. Check those blogs out so you can catch up to where we're at right now. If you have any questions or you want to add a question to what we're talking about, please let us know. And uh, I hope this helps, and we will see you tomorrow.